Hola digital world, welcome back once again to another episode of Spliced In Later. Apologies during that opening intro music. Uh, if you heard some scratching and some delightful meowing, uh, my cat Winston just decided to time that at a very funny time. And I don't care about recording. Uh, well, this is another movie review time. Uh, our second for this week, since our last review where we talked about Wish, a surprisingly kind and positive review than I think a lot of people were expecting, which is always nice. Uh, for this review today, uh, fair warning, I am not particularly well. I got something. It could be the dreaded COVID. I don't think it is. Uh, but it's definitely something within me that's making me very unwell, very tired, very coffee. Um, so simply because of that, I'm lacking in a bit of my normal energy. So this one might not be very long. It might not be very in depth. It might not be that excited. But that's not a reflection of the movie. That's just a reflection of how things are going right now. But we'll see. Often I've said, this review won't be very long. And then I end up talking for half an hour. So we'll have to wait and see. Anyway, for today's review, one of the last movies we wanted to catch this year before ranking the top 10 movies of 2023. A movie that has been very highly anticipated. Discussed a lot about its potential. About whether it needs to exist. About how and why and... The strike of saying it might not even come out this year. It's been a long road to get to this point because it's been a long year. But today we are reviewing and talking about Wonka. The newest Willy Wonka film starring Timothy Chalamet as Willy Wonka. Essentially an origin story, a prequel for Willy Wonka and how he becomes the amazing chocolatier that is very famous in the Roald Dahl books when Charlie and friends go into his chocolate factory of nightmares and then immortalized in the 1970s film Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory starring Gene Wilder and then a uh, less talked about the better version uh, starring Johnny Depp in 2005, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Uh, so right off the bat, if you have any questions about which movie this uh, is a prequel to, which one it relates to, uh, neither. Though it takes a lot of musical cues from the Gene Wilder one, uh, one particular couple of song variations, um, I would not say it's a direct prequel to that because it sort of exists in its own world. What's happening in this film cannot possibly line up with what happens in the Gene Wilder one. It's probably more connected to Gene Wilder than the Tim Burton one simply because it's also a musical. It's surprisingly a musical. I didn't know it was a full-blown musical from the trailers. They kept that a secret, which was interesting. But Timothy Chalamet is singing quite a lot in this film. So because of that, it certainly has a lot more in common with that original film. But some of the colors, the aesthetics, the uh, the use of CG and the, the abstractness of living in the Willy Wonka world, I think relates a lot to the Tim Burton Charlie and the Chocolate Factory version as well. So it's somewhere right down the middle, leaning probably more towards Gene Wilder, but it's not disregarding that other movie. Because maybe the Tim Burton movie, you like that one. As I said during the Wish Review, we all like different things, and I'm not here to say that what you like is wrong or not. So if you've not seen either of those films, that's okay. If you're worried that this film will contradict those films, it won't. As long as you've got a little bit of love for that Gene Wilder one, you can appreciate the nods to it, but otherwise... It's its own stamp on Willy Wonka. Directed by Paul King, the wonderful, wonderful director of Paddington and Paddington 2, some of the greatest movies of all time. Uh, for me, that's good. He's also done stuff like The Mighty Boosh, which doesn't really work for me. I don't know how I do with that sort of abstract humor, but I've never really got it. My friends absolutely adore it, though, especially another movie he made called Bunny and the Bull, which I quite like that one, but that's a lot more abstract and weird. Um, so... In that regard, and because the world of Willy Wonka, as written by Roald Dahl, is kind of a nightmare world. Very insane, very kooky, especially if you've read both Charlie and the Chocolate Factory and Charlie and the Great Glass Elevator. The Great Glass Elevator is insane. Um, I, was, can, I was interested to see which side of the coin Paul King would land on, if he was more Paddington style or more Mighty Boosh style. And he's more Paddington style. This is a family movie. It's for everybody, especially if you like musicals. Um, and starring quite the cast of Who's Who in British Films. Now, alongside Timothy Chalamet, you've got Hugh Grant, Olivia Coleman, Sally Hawkins, Rowan Atkinson, um, Keegan-Michael Key, 
uh, who, who else is in here? Some others. There's a few cameos, like uh, Simon Farnaby, I think, is a regular cameo in Paul King films. Um, Patterson Joseph is Mr. Slugworth, Matt Lucas. So, uh, quite a lot in here. And some other actors I'm sure I have seen in stuff before, but do not recall at this present time. Uh, so the story of Wonka, if you're curious, um, is very simply Willy Wonka comes to town. I'm not exactly sure where. I don't think it's London. I think it's like just this, this island of chocolatiers. It's sort of this, this small town village where there is a lot of chocolate uh, shops and chocolate financiers. Everybody loves chocolate there. Willy Wonka comes to town on a boat after traveling the world. He's got all, he's got all the tricks of the trade. What's interesting is the film doesn't bother to give you origins of why Willy Wonka is how he is. Why does his hat be limitless where he can just pull everything out of it? What are all these different things? How did he come up with the recipes for all this chocolate? It's not really interested in that, which is interesting. I thought if you were doing a Wonka origin prequel movie, that's what you would focus on. But it's really more of a, a homage to Annie of all things. Annie and maybe a little, a little bit of Les Mis. Because the movie is actually about Wonka coming to town. He just wants to set up a chocolate shop. Essentially, he wants to give chocolate to the world to both honor and reconnect with his late mother. Uh, unfortunately, the town he has picked is run by three very powerful, very evil chocolate manufacturers, with the Slugworth being the main one of the three. Uh, they are threatened by Wonka's talent, so they stop him in every sense that they can to make sure he doesn't sell chocolate. At the same time, when he arrives to town, he loses most of his money and he accidentally gets signed into a contract with Olivia Coleman in like a boarding house she runs where he can't pay his tab. So he's forced to be her slave along with a bunch of other slaves of varying ages who have to work in her laundry until they pay off their debt. So very much Annie in that regard especially with how he has to sneak out in a laundry chute to go and do his chocolating stuff. But Willy Wonka is a very positive, very happy man. Uh, he doesn't, he isn't beaten. Uh, he doesn't take things lying down. He's always got to ace up his sleeve and he unites with all the different people in Olivia Coleman's boarding house. These ne'er-do-wells and, and, and sad saps. And together they work on a plan to get him to just get that chocolate out there, to get Wonka's chocolate. At the same time, coming to terms with the fact that they're also going to have to try and take down these chocolatiers because they're running some sort of chocolate cartel where they have this endless supply of chocolate and they pay off the authorities, specifically Keegan-Michael Key's police chiefs, with chocolate. Um, and they run this little syndicate, which is protected by Rowan Atkinson's Church of Chocolate Psychopaths or something like that. As I said, it is a very strange movie, very off the wall sort of thing, but not in a sense where you will be put off by it. Not in that extreme Mighty Boosh way. It just, it certainly has its own style and flair that I think builds on both what the Gene Wilder movie and the Tim Burton movie did while doing its own thing. And that's really it. It's a, it's a triumphant story of a, a down on his luck, but very, very likable protagonist who, saves it doesn't save the day but he goes about his way to achieve a dream and he will achieve that dream i thought the movie was pretty good it wasn't incredible i i don't know what i was expecting i think not to the movie's fault but i really 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 love the gene wilder willy wonka movie it may be one of my favorite movies of all time it's an incredible movie incredible musical uh, a well-adapted story of the book, but also doing its own thing to make it its own own thing. And a really interesting dynamic and balance of the story. I love in the original Willy Wonka. One day I'll do a whole episode about it, I think. But that movie starts off completely serious. The outside world that you see where everybody's scrambling for these golden tickets that Willy Wonka puts out so you can go into his chocolate factory uh, is wonderfully funny but grounded in reality. And Willy Wonka is this mysterious person. You've never seen him. You don't know who he is. Um, and then when you go in the chocolate factory, it becomes this wild, insane place where anything can happen. It's completely off the walls. And Gene Wilder is still, you've seen him, but you don't know who he is. Is he good? Is he bad? Does he want to help the children? Does he want to kill them? Is he insane or is he misunderstood? Uh, there's a lot of mystery to that character. And I think that balance makes it a perfect film. Whereas the Tim Burton film 
what doesn't work for me is that the outside world is very strange, much like the inside world, because it's Tim Burton's aesthetic. So it all just becomes sort of the same. And that's kind of the same here with Wonka. Um, not to the extreme degree of Tim Burton, but this world is very, very strange in the essence of what it's like to be inside Wonka's chocolate factory. The outside people behave and act strangely. They live in abstract houses. They do strange things, um, which I think detracts from the specialness of Willy Wonka himself as a person if everybody around him is also kooky and bananas like him. But that's just my personal preference. I don't think that's a fault of the movie. That's just something that I really like about that original movie that I can't help but compare when I look at something like this. Um, it's it's not a movie that's going to blow your mind with the incredible songs or emotional moments. It's not going to be something where it's like, wow, that that really made me love Willy Wonka again or reinvented my love for the franchise. But it's also not boring. It's not poorly made. Uh, it's not uh, inept in any sense. It is a very competent, well-made movie that is entertaining for its acceptable runtime. It's under two hours, which is always a delight for movies these days. And it makes Willy Wonka a very likable protagonist, so you enjoy watching him. And that is 100% because of Timothy Chalamet. Regardless of what you think about the movie as a whole, how it reflects to other Wonka films, whether you think it's got a certain identity or if it's just a run-of-the-mill film, Timothy Chalamet as Willy Wonka is great. He throws everything he has into it. He makes the Willy Wonka character his own. He's not doing a Gene Wilder and Tim impersonation. He's not doing a Johnny Depp impersonation. He's playing his own spin on Wonka as a young, uh, bright-eyed youth who all he wants is to just share chocolate with the world. And he wants to help people. Right off the bat with his opening number, you see him giving money to the poor and you know straight away that he is a pure good person. In contrast to what I think the mystique of Wonka from the original film is. But again, it's its own thing. If you, do, you have to detach the two, I think, if you're going to appreciate this one. But because of that, because he's not imitating anything else and he's doing his own thing, uh, he's really fun to watch. And his musical numbers are really good too. I didn't know Timothy Chalamet could sing. Maybe it was already established and I didn't know it. But pretty much every single song except for one is sung by him. There's a song sung by the bad guys, which is delightfully funny. I really liked that one, probably the most. But, you know... It's like, a, it's like I can see this in the future being adapted to the stage as a musical on stage because it's very musical-esque in that you have the song and dance numbers of him imagining being a chocolatier and then selling his chocolate and then opening his chocolate store and all of that stuff. Uh, it's really fun. It's good. And it rollicks along at a good, at a good pace. It's very funny too. Uh, some of the humor is very obvious and, you know, that's fine. And then some of the humor is very dumb and silly or odd that uh, you can't help but laugh, which is fine. One of the people caught up in Olivia Coleman's slave operation is like a failed comedian and everything he does, he just makes puns about his com comedy career. And they're so it's so stupid that I can't help but laugh. There's a bit where he's trying to hoodwink somebody by pretending he's ringing from the zoo. So he's on the phone going, hello, it's the zoo. And then he has his friends stand next to the phone booth and make animal noises. And he sticks his head out the window and goes, Quiet down, you animals! And then he makes his voice sound strange and go, I love you too, Mr. Octopus. Like, that's stupid. But it probably may have been the funniest joke for me in the entire film. If that's a reflection on my poor taste in humor and my juvenile sense, that's fine. I'm okay with that. But yeah, it's very funny. It's got that Paddington-style humor where it's wholesome humor. Nothing is rude or or innuendo or anything like that. It's just it's just delightful fun, which I think if you really liked the Paddington films, you're going to enjoy this this film, I believe. Uh, the supporting performances, uh, this, this is not a very even balance, I think. There are some characters that get to do a lot, specifically the actors playing Wonka's little rebe rebellion group, the Chocolatiers with Patterson Joseph and friends, Keegan-Michael Key's chief, Olivia Coleman as the... As the any slave person, uh, all really good. But then you have these other big, big actors who you've seen in trailers uh, as be a big part of this film. Obviously, the names that will draw you in to see this if you're not a Timothy Chalamet nut. Um, and they don't really do much 
in the film, surprisingly. Sally Hawkins is only in a couple of scenes, and you've probably seen them all in the trailer, um, which is fine. But if you haven't seen a trailer, try and avoid it, because it kind of spoils the the big ultimate endgame of what Wonka wants to do if you've seen Sally Hawkins in that trailer. So it's up to you on that one. Uh, Rowan Atkinson, he showed up for like one scene at the start of the movie, and then he was gone for nearly the whole thing. And then he has a little thing to do at the end. But for me, I felt like they didn't really take advantage of Rowan Atkinson humor. If you're going to get Rowan Atkinson in your movie, let him do some Rowan Atkinson stuff, I think. Um, and the biggest hit, which I think I need to address because it's quite the surprise, really, is Hugh Grant as the Oompa Loompa. So if you've seen the trailers, um, a lot of the marketing has been, whether it's positive or negative, is that Hugh Grant is playing an Oompa Loompa. The Oompa Loompa looks just like the Oompa Loompas from Gene Wilder, all of that stuff. Um, in the context of the movie, uh, if you've seen the trailers that have come out for Wonka, you've seen about 90% of Hugh Grant's movie, uh, role. Um, he's very not relevant to the plot until right at the end where he does one thing, but he's also, it's kind of like they just made this movie and then went, oh shit, if we're doing a Willy Wonka origin movie, the Oompa Loompas have to be in it in some capacity. Quick, write in an Oompa Loompa and give him a couple of scenes and that's it. Uh, Nothing against Hugh Grant's performance as an Oompa Loompa. Hugh Grant, especially in his later years, has developed a very good ability to do comedic timing. Um, It's not his best comedy, um, but he's funny. He's delightful. He's got some good quips. He's just not really important to anything going on. He shows up, he says some stuff, bops Wonka on the head, goes away. Shows up later, says some stuff goes away and then it's the end of the movie essentially so really all i'm saying for that is if the main thing you want to see this movie for is because you've seen the oompa loompa parts in the trailer and you're like hugh grant looks great i want to see it for that just be fair warned he's really not in the movie that much and he doesn't do much more than what you've already seen which is disappointing i really hate when trailers just show too much stuff that's the big thing at the moment trailers are too long and they just tell you the whole movie i love a trailer that's short and just gives you the bare bones, the bare minimum of what you need to come and see. But these days, I assume it's IP brands, I assume it's marketing, I assume it's Hollywood, who don't trust that people will just see a 10 second trailer and will come and see it. They want everybody to definitely come and see the film. So they will blow their load. They will show their hand as much as possible. The new Kung Fu Panda 4 trailer that just dropped, I know exactly what's gonna happen in that movie because the trailer showed me pretty much in linear fashion how that movie's going to play out. And that's really disappointing. Look, overall, I really don't have that much to say about Wonka because it's not incredible, uh, but it's not awful. It is a really nice, wholesome film. Uh, Timothy Chalamet is excellent. The musicalness of it all is surprisingly good. I love that it has its own identity. It pays homage to mostly Gene Wilder, but a little bit of Tim Burton, but for its own part, it's its own reality of the Wonka story. It's not locked in into being a prologue to one particular story or film. I thought the direction was great. I thought the performances were good. Um, Even the actors, when they bothered, not when they bothered, but when they had a role, even the ones that are less utilized, I should say, did well with what they were given. Um, Made me laugh a lot, especially at stupid, really dumb stuff. So I think with all the movies that are out over Christmas, um... I think this is one to this is one to see. I think this one that might do well at the box office as well. I don't know how much money was spent on it, but if you're looking for a film to see with your family um, and you don't want it to be animated, this is a great one. This is a good time. Um, if you love Timothy Chalamet, you're going to get your Timothy Chalamet love out of it. Um, it is fun. It is good. It is well made. I'll give it a seven out of ten. Solid stuff. Well done, Wonka. You have succeeded. <laughs> it's just a shame that I don't like chocolate. I will say that when everybody's going nuts in the film and just eating so much chocolate, my God, I feel so sick. I, I assume it's because I don't have a sweet tooth, but the idea of just wolfing, cho- I have two bites of chocolate and I'm done. Uh, that's just me though. I uh, would be interested to see if people watch this, if they also feel like, oh man, I wish I had access to that that big vat of chocolate liquid. Or if like me, they're like, oh, that's um, that's that's too much for me. No, I'll just... I'll have something else. Thank you very much. 
There you are. Thank you very much for listening. I hope you've enjoyed. Uh, as we wrap up this year, I've got two more reviews coming for you over the next couple of weeks. Next week will be the Chicken Run Dawn of the Nugget review, which I'm excited to do, and Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom review, which I'll do. <laughs> and then we are, we'll wrap it up with the top 10 movies of 2023, take a wee break, and then we're right back to it. For 2024, I think Mean Girls, the musical, will be first up, but we'll have to wait and see. I hope you're enjoying the show. I hope you're enjoying the episodes. Uh, Even if you just tune in for one specific thing or if you listen all the time, it means a lot to me one way or another. It truly does, so thank you. Uh, So until next week, I love and appreciate you. As always, you've been spliced in later. Adios, muchachos. I'll catch you next time. (laughs) 